extra bath blanket, and I need my wipe, and you know what, I'm gonna grab some of these gloves so I'm not reaching over here the whole time. I got hand wash in the room, so I'm good then. So I've got, got all my supplies then. So I'll come on in and I'll knock, knock. Hi, Mrs. Bellman. I'm Kathy. I'm your student nurse today, and I have to put a catheter in. Have you ever had one of these before? No? No? Okay. It's a tube inserted into your bladder to help to drain the urine out. You'll feel a little pressure, a little uncomfortable while I'm placing it in, but after that, you shouldn't feel any uncomfort or um, any pain. Is okay. Is now an okay time to do so? Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So then, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I will provide for privacy. I'm going to wash my hands. We'll provide you guys with an order that has the catheter on it, and then I'm going to take my order and then I'm going to compare. Can you tell me your first and last name? Stella Bellman. And your date of birth? Six forty-one. And do you have any allergies? No, no, no. Are you allergic to um, betadine or shellfish? No. No. Okay. Then we can go ahead and we'll get started then. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to raise this up to a comfortable height. And you guys, this is Bellman Lube. Your table's going to. This is Bellman Lube, and this is what we'll use when we lubricate the catheters or anything else we use like that because it's a water soluble. Um, base lubricant and it doesn't stain or anything like that. So I'll have somebody be my volunteer when we get to that point. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure my patient's comfortable. So I'm going to take my extra bath blanket, kind of, it's in a diamond shape. I'm going to place that over. I'm going to come and I'm going to grab my other bath blanket underneath. Make sure my patient stays comfortable. And this is Bellman. One of the first things I have to do is I have to your legs situated for me. Okay, I'm going to spread those open and then I'm going to have you just lay down and just let them kind of fall open. So, all right. Okay. Make sure you give yourself a wide enough face to work in here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. And I'll do the peri care. So I'm just going to wipe you down a little bit with a wet uh, disposable little washcloth here and it'll feel a little bit cool to you but it shouldn't stain or anything. So I'll use one corner first. I'm going to spread this. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to use another corner come on the side and I'll use a final corner area and come right down the middle. What if they're on their period? We might have to do more. Okay. Yeah, more cleansing. And then I'll take my gloves off and then I'll come do hand hygiene again. Now I make sure I've got everything here I need. I've got my waste basket, my um, catheter kit. I'm going to place this at a, uh, a good working height for me. I'm going to get this out of my way. Okay, and you guys can do that too when you have your checkoffs. I'm going to open my kit, and before I do so, though, I want to show you that on your kits, you guys, the numbers of the catheter are here. This is the size. This one says 14 French 5 cc. What that means is that's the 14 French lumen of the catheter, or the size of the catheter, and it's got a balloon that holds 5 to 10 milliliters. Now, with the catheters, the higher the number, the higher, the, the bigger the catheter. It's opposite of the needles. So we start low, 12 or 14, whenever we can. How would you determine size? Uh, we would always go with a 14 unless somebody's had a catheter in for a long time and it's been established it's bigger. bigger. One. Oh. Yeah, I've had, when I was in home care, I had patients who had catheters for actually years and they were, um, they were in like, uh, they were size 22 okay. or 21, mm -hmm. yeah, with a 30 milliliter balloon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, but that's unusual. That's oh. unusual. So, what does it say on the doctor? 
doctor's order just the 14 they it may or may not so we grab the smallest one yeah and the 14 is a good size the smallness is uh, and in pediatrics you go six eight tens so it just depends on the size of the child all right so um, i'm going to take my kit and then i'm going to use this as a little, little extra trash receptacle i'm going to set that right there is that now you guys keep all parts of your catheter uh, of your kit, okay? So save this for yourself too. Now I have to get into my kit. So these are sealed. So does the kit include gloves? And the kit includes gloves. I was hope this one does. I thought we were gonna use. So if you guys remember right, I go away, right? Mm -hmm. Side, side. Now so that I don't bump into it all the time, I'm gonna move it off. I'm gonna change it to make the corners a little bit like that. All right, and then I wanna pick everything up from the center. I'm not gonna dig my fingers in there. That's all sterile, okay? So this is my little drape that I'm gonna put underneath the patient. Basically, it helps catch the beta dying. It's not really considered sterile because it's almost impossible Right, to so keep that it's sterile. That's terrible when yeah, it's going down I'm, I'm all over it, even though I'm kind of on the side. But I'm going to do that just so I don't get the bed all full of stuff. And you don't have gloves on during no, this time no. yet? No. Okay, so and then now I have to get my gloves. So I'm going to pick them up again from the center and then bring them over here. I'll give myself plenty of room. Still the same technique though that we did before. Now, could you utilize that paper, the inside of where the gloves are, to be able to put supplies on if you needed to? Yeah, but you won't need to. Oh. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this, and That's my cool. trash is handy. I'll throw it. Otherwise, I'm just going to let it go. I'll pick it up later. I'll slip on it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to slip on it. Okay, so now I'm sterile. So now I can start working in my kit. So. This is called a fenestrated drape, you guys. You can use this if you want. Um, all it does is, for me, all it ever did was get in the way and possibly fall down. Oh. And it's not like you need a bullseye anyways. You know where you're going. <laughs> 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 you know. So what I recommend you do when you take this out of the kit, just pick it up and then throw it in your trash. Now I'm going to start working in my kit. So I'm going to work um, like this. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my beta dye on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and toss that in the trash. I'll get that ready. Next thing I have to do is I have to start preparing the catheter itself. So I need to come in here and I need to To remove this and attach my syringe and all your syringes come with a cap so you have to take the cap off and I'm going to attach that get that ready to go and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this blue protective sheet being careful not to uh, let that catheter flip around too much and then I'm going to place it in my box the tip and then I'm going to take my lubrication and I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to lube the end of that tip. So of that you do that um, For practical okay. purposes, yeah. But go through the motions of putting the lube on. In your kits, you guys, you have a foil tear packet that has lube in it. Open up the foil packet and just stick it on the end and leave it in your kit then. Okay, so. All right. So now it looks like I'm ready to come over and work with my patient. So I pick up my, my kit and I want to make sure that you don't pick it up this way and then bring it over like this. 
Why would I not want to do that? I'm not touch. sterile. Not I'm sterile gonna touch. I'm gonna touch. So I want to have it on the side. I'm just gonna grasp it on the side. I'm gonna tuck that together and I don't want that hanging out. And I'm gonna bring it over. And then I'm gonna take my top and grasping on the inside, I'm gonna bring this over. Okay, so now I'm ready to start cleaning and get my patient ready. So with my tongs and my little faded on uh, cotton, I'm gonna now place my hand here and spread and look. And so I'm gonna start on the side. I'm using my hand again, trash can there. Side. And then the middle. Okay, now I'm ready to place my catheter in. So, Keith, can you open up that loop for me? And this is what your instructor will do too. They'll just hold that for you so you can do that. All right, I'm gonna make sure that my catheter is free and I'm not gonna get caught on anything. And I'm going to advance the catheter. And I'm gonna be careful not to take this finger and shove it up against there because then I'm not sterile anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance the catheter. Okay. And then now I see urine. So how much further should I advance? Do you guys know? Mm -hmm. Two to three inches for women. So I'm about, I'm about there, and I'm not gonna advance it any further. I'm in good. So now I can come down and clamp that so that it doesn't come squirting back out at me. Because if she coughs, it might come oh. back out. And then now I have to fill the balloon. And I have to put constant pressure on this plunger, you guys, otherwise, It'll come back right out. And where's the balloon? I'll show you the balloon when I take it out. Okay. It's in her bladder. That's why we advance it two to three more inches after we see urine. Okay. And then while holding down on this plunger, I'm going to come down here and then disconnect. And then I need to secure this to the catheter, securing whatever device they have for you guys. We just tape it, right? Or you might tape it. If we have one of these on the, on the mannequins, go ahead and use it. And then I'm gonna secure this to a non-movable part of the bed, and we actually have hooks on these beds, but not the, um, not the bed rail. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's, and I'll clean everything up. So that's placing that in. Now I have to come and I have to remove the catheter. So I'm going to put on clean gloves and I'm going to have a um, needleless 10 milliliter syringe. I'll look to see how much they have put, uh, almost everybody always puts 10 milliliters and they just fill the whole thing up. And then I'm going to attach this again here. And I'm going to pull back until I don't get any more and it should be right at 10, which is good. And then I'm going to ask her to take a couple deep breaths and same thing when placing in the catheter, just take a couple deep breaths for me. And then I'm just going to take it out and I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. So, does that make sense to you guys there? Okay, good. So the catheter itself, when you fill up the balloon, this is what it looks like. Oh! Look at that. And then it keeps it in place. Okay. Is that balloon in the... It's in the black. Now there's a few different things for the males. Two to three for men. Yeah, after you see. Is it one to two for men? <coughs> no, it's totally different for men, and I'll show you what it is for men. So we'll come, I'll just. Let's see. Two to three inches. And, you guys know, you know how we say evidence based practice and that kind of stuff? The reason they changed this for men is because people were blowing this up in the prostate or in the um, urethra or wherever, and so it was not a good thing. So over here. I 
know what your video is. So we'll have we'll do everything the same except when we're cleaning. What we're going to do is we're going to take the first cotton ball and we're going to start right at the middle and work our way around and then we'll get rid of it. Start again right in the center and work your way a little bit further down. Again, center and then further down as far down as you can go. And then that's it right there. So now in placing it, because I'm right-handed, I usually am on the other side, but I'll just go on this side like this. So you go ahead and you go ahead and just place it in and then keep going. Keep going. And then for this one, you want to you want to put lubrication all the way up the side of the tubing. And I don't have that, so that's why it's going in a little tougher for me. Again, how many inches are we? We're going to go all the way to the bifurcation. Oh, good. Ooh. Well, what, if we did not do that, what's happened in the past, and this is evidence based, so we're going to go all the way here. Okay, and then we're going to then we're going to blow it up. What happened in the past is if they didn't go high enough, it was being blown up in the prostate and urethra, <laughs> and it was very, very painful. They, they, they injured people. Yeah. So what we do now then is we go ahead and then we um, inflate the balloon while it's all the way up like that. And then all we do is we gently pull it back and then secure it here after oh. the balloon's been inflated. Oh, okay. okay, so it doesn't stay all the way up there. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, just for insertion. Okay, okay, but be careful. And then also, you guys, you want to make sure that when you that it looks like it's at a good spot and everything. You don't want it like pulling like that <laughs> or anything like that. So. So we don't check for urine flow or anything like that. No, we put it all the way to the bifurcation. Yep, just just precautionary method. So that's the difference between those two, so, okay. all right, okay.